Okay, everyone, silicon moulds. You're always asking me to make more silicon moulds on video. Knock yourselves out. I'm going to make loads today. So we'll be using the Let's Resin Silicon Rubber. They do these lovely good sized bottles of it. So we'll be using that. And we will be using my Crystal Edge mould. It's for a Crystal Edge kind of coaster type thing. And we will be using my new one that you haven't seen before. Only my members have seen this before while I've been developing it. This one has got a crystal centre as well. And then because you, you all keep asking how I make my chunky inlays. Okay, the secret's out. They are actually cake fondant things inlays. I forget what make they are, but I've got loads of them. And I am getting low on stock. So we are going to be making lots. The other thing we're going to be doing is we're going to be making a bunch of Kermit moulds because I've had some orders in for these and I can't find my shiny Kermit so I think I need to make another master shiny Kermit so as you can see he's matte finish I'll show you how I go about making a shiny one so that I've got a new master for the shiny ones too and I've got a third idea so this is going to be a real mould making extravaganza so look out for the birth of a new mould how I make the stuff that I sell in my store already and a little trick for making this guy shiny and finally an entire new design of Kermit being made. So it's going to be a big one, isn't it? Right, let's get some silicon mixed up. First thing to do if you're making moulds is make sure your original's really clean. And Kermit gets used a lot and joins me in the craft room permanently. So yeah, he's got mucky, he's got bits of resin all over him and yeah. So we're bathing him in Wonder Wipe spray. <laughs> Trying to make sure he's all nice and clean and degreased and no lumpy bumpy bits where there shouldn't be. Yeah, he looks happy about it, doesn't he? <laughs> so this silicon is awesome. As you, those of you who follow me will know. This is my go-to silicon. I use it all the time. It's a one-to-one -one, and because I am a person of little brain, I don't measure. I just do half a, half a cup of one, half a cup of the other. Something I've discovered recently, plastic forks are really good for stirring with. I think because the silicon runs through them. So we're going to stir this up. We've got to get really thorough. That's the other thing because it's got obviously square end. You can get right into the corners with it. You can give it a really good stir. Now, the other thing I'm going to do is, as you can see, I'm on my lovely silicon mats here, my lovely purple ones, which when I'm working with more silicon, I don't really want to do because it makes a bit of a mess of your mats. It can sometimes stick and not come off because the mat's silicon. And silicon likes to stick to silicon, let's face it. So I've got some, this is just some tracing paper, kitchen parchment paper, anything that's not silicon, basically, just a bit of paper will do. We're just going to put that down on there. And that's going to be our work surface. I shouldn't get messy with these two anyway, but these definitely will. So while I'm stirring, actually, you know what? I'm going to sit down for a change. This is nice. Hello from down lower. Right, we're just going to stand all these up as flat as we can. I seem to have a little bit of a bump in my mat here. That's, that's one. There's a fork under it. That'll do it, won't it? Right, there we go. So that should be flatter. So we want it nice and flat and we're going to put our little fondant moulds like this. Now I have used or tried to use the ones that are actual cutters that have got like a plunger in them because I've got a huge amount of those. Some work, some don't. The problem is, is that the silicon, I've got a, I've got a bump down the middle here, haven't I? Silicon um, goes down into the, the, you know, around the edges where the cut, the cutting part will be. And the obvious problem with that is that you then get, you don't get a proper, a proper uh, inlay. You could, I suppose, cut around it, trim it off afterwards. I'm just going to end up with a bump in the middle. I'm just going to have a bump in the middle and it's just going to be annoying. Yeah, where was I? Yes, yeah, so you can, cut, you can cut around it and remove that edge, that, that, that annoying edge that that causes. But... Um, I think it's probably better to just avoid it in the first place and not use those ones. <laughs> Simple as that. Right, there we are. So they're all stood up right. If you're concerned about them falling over, let's zoom out a bit. Oh, there we are. If you're concerned about these falling over, because as you can see, they've got like a little foot on the back, because that's meant to go onto a plunger, I think. If you're concerned about them falling over, just bodge them into some sand or whatever, rice, anything just to 
stop them falling over. So I'm going to carry on stirring this just for a little bit longer. And first of all, I'm going to get it into these two moulds here, which I think, although on my levelling table, I still haven't managed to get it level since my craft room moved, which is really annoying. So I'm going to put something under the edge of this one and hope that that levels it. And same with this one. We'll find something, something thin. Let's just put one of my little micro brushes. It's only slightly off, but it's just enough to, when you're making something, especially something that's going to be sold, because I have got an order for this one already, and that is going to be a gift for one of my subscribers. Um, you, you want them to be absolutely perfect, don't you, in terms of levelness. There we are. So, I will persevere with my levelling table. The real answer is I still need to get Mark to uh, come and level up the whole thing for me, then it won't be an issue. But I do love my glass levelling table. I can stash things under it too. And it's like, it's like Christmas. When I go underneath it, there's all the things I've forgotten I'd hidden under there. It's lovely. Right, that should be mixed up enough now, she says, hopefully. So I'm going to put my fork, stand it up in a different, another pot. The other fun thing about making moulds is, of course, that you can um, peel off the surplus afterwards, which is fantastic. You know what I mean? When it's all cured, pulling it, pulling it off the cup and things. It's, yeah immense fun something very therapeutic about that right now i don't want these to be too thick because i do want to be able to post these by large letter posts which obviously will save people a heck of a lot of money so i try to get it so as it's there we go not too thick and i know usually that a cup half a cup rather these are half pint party glasses, by the way. Half a cup, I'll do that one. But of course, this one will take a bit more because of the hole in the middle. So we're going to mix up another lot. Another cup full. This is the other thing I tend to do when I'm making these sort of moulds. I tip it around a bit. That makes sure there's no bubbles got stuck against that all important. What's well, going to be the top surface of whatever anybody creates from it. And out of the, the crystal -y edges. See the little bubbles are releasing? The let's resin silicon degasses really well anyway. But that just helps to make sure they're on their way. And then after about half an hour, I'll just come in and just make sure there's no more bubbles on this surface. Because obviously this surface of this this silicon is going to be the oops, it's going to be the base um, that they'll be putting down onto their worktop. So you do need that to be a pretty good surface. Otherwise you'll end up with wonky moulds. Right, more stirring. And I'm just going to put a little bit more in that one, just to be sure. And we'll take this one up to what should be full depth. Yep. You can see it's just going over my fork. I'm being careful not to scratch my original. It's also checking that it's level. We can put a bit more in that one. And again, I'm just going to tip this one around a bit while my fork runs, dribbles off. These mould originals, between every use, so that one's new, <laughs> but between every use, what I do is I polish the surface of the original again with some poli uh, resin polish. I'll put you the link for the resin polish. It's actually been quite a revelation finding that. I know you can use all sorts of things like, uh, you know, bathroom cleaner and all sorts of uh, car polish and things. But I've just found that comes in a really nice little bottle and it's really, really good. And I think it's gentle too. So it's just the job for polishing the surfaces. So that's what I do when I get this out. I shall polish the surface just lightly again, and then I'll wash it in the sink with some uh, fairy liquid dishwashing soap. Other brands are available. <laughs> and then they're good to go again. Then I store them upside down so they don't get covered in bits and scratches. Right, the next thing I'm going to do is these other ones. The, all this lot. So... This gets messy. I've tried actually pouring it in and with the bigger ones, yeah, you, it, that's easy enough. Like the pumpkin, the big pumpkin. Just pour it in and pushing pinch your cup. You can straighten it out again afterwards. Now these are small enough for me to not worry too much if they're not 100% level because you just genuinely won't notice because they're so small. So the big ones, yes, I'll just pour the silicon like this. You don't want it domed or anything. In fact, if anything, if it's got a slight bit of surface tension pulling up lips around the edges, that means when people use it, if they're going to go with the method where they stick it down onto the silicon mould that they're doing the inlay in, rather than float it in the top of the resin, um, it creates like a suction, so it holds them in place quite well. 
So yes, I can do all the bigger ones like this. And I'll show you what I do with the smaller ones in a minute because they can be very fiddly. But I may need to mix up a little bit more to do them all. These are all available in my store, obviously, if you can't be bothered to make your own because it is a messy business and silicon is expensive, of course. And you've got to buy your originals of these first and so on. So I know a lot of people prefer not to not to make their own inlays. Um, so unless you're going to make an awful lot of exactly the same one, it's probably not worth it. However, I know you like to see how these are made. So here you go. But if you don't want to, in store now. And if in my store you do happen to see that there's a lot of them that you want, or you'd like a variation on the standard package I do, because some of them come in packs of like sets. Um, and if you're thinking, no, I'd actually like one of these and two of those and whatever, just drop me an email because I'm more than happy to do like a mix and match. So well, I don't know if you can see what's going on here, but with the little flamingo, as my silicon is getting less and less in the pot, it's coming out in a very thin stream. So I am able to go down into his leg and let's do the little paw print as well. Let me mix some more up and then I'll do all these really fiddly ones. And by fiddly, I mean all these little hearts. Yeah, I'm going to need a bit more to finish that one too. Okay, I'm not too off screen here. Oops, let's come out a little bit further. There we are. So yeah, a lot of you have been bugging me about making more moulds and uh, I had promised Let's Resin that I would show a lot more of my mould making seeing as they so, so kindly sent me a load of silicon. This last batch here that I'm using, this batch I'm using here, by the way, I did buy because I think if a firm sends me stuff for free to show to you all, you know, using my videos, then I should, that is what I should use it for. This stuff that I'm making to sell, so I've got orders to fill, then no, I buy the silicon for that. Just think that's the right, right thing to do, you know. If it was only a tiny bit and it was stuff that I was making for a video anyway, um, so you could probably justify this, <laughs> but um, it, yeah, then that seems fine to me. But I don't, I don't want to really take the mickey and have these lovely suppliers who look after us crafters so well sending me stuff to use for videos and then basically using it all for things I'm selling in my shop instead. Doesn't seem right, does it? <laughs> so, yes, I do still buy it sometimes. Um, by the way, if anybody wants any of this silicon, I've got a discount code for you. I'll put the link down in the video description below and uh, yeah, knock yourselves out. It is good stuff. It's the easiest to use that I've found because it's translucent. If anybody wanted to use um, ultraviolet resin with it, then they can. It's easy peasy. And uh, yeah, being a one to one, it's so easy to mix as well. Right. So this is what I do with the little tiny fiddly ones such as these little guys you know when it's too you're going to end up with you're just going to end up with silicon everywhere basically oh you see and this is the thing you can knock them over so if you want to tip them if you want to sort of prop them up in something like sand or whatever as i said earlier it's, it's a good idea i'm going to be able to just vacate the room in a minute so as long as i don't knock any over in the next 20 minutes we're okay so this is what I do. I just get a little stick and of course you can get smaller lollipop sticks than this. You could just use whatever stirrer you use. But the trick is just to drizzle it in gently off the end of your stick and then you get, you don't make quite as much mess as I used to doing this. These hearts, I always sell them in little packs. So you've got lots of different designs. They're so tiny. Um, it just kind of makes sense. Of course, if you have any overspill with your silicon, it's dead easy because all you do is uh, trim it off with a little pair of scissors. I use nail scissors. Incidentally, I have tried cheaper, you know, like you see the ones that, the copies that you see on Timu that look like they've even copied the Let's Resin branding, which is infuriating. Um, but I did try some against my better judgment just to see if it worked. Two days didn't kill. I don't think it's even available anymore. That was, uh, I tried it a few months ago, almost by accident, because I saw it and thought, oh, let resin. That's how convincing the packaging was. But anything that's a kind of chemically thing, I'm definitely finding the main proprietary brands are the way to go, and also safer. You can get, because you don't know what's in these cheaper brands, you don't know how harmful it could be to your health. Um, so things like PPE, never buy cheap. Always buy correct. I use 3P, 3M 
respirator and mask, for example. And they're not that expensive anyway. Um, and the resins, yeah. If you contact the supplier and you can't get hold of an EU and US, you know, or whatever country you're in, compliant safety data sheet from them, the chances are you should not be using that stuff because you have no idea what horrible chemicals are in it. Brands that I use, I have got the safety data sheets from them. I've had a my chemical compliance expert look over them as well because I don't know what any of it means. It's all, he was happy that the information seemed accurate, sensible and so on. One that's really scaring me lately while we're on the subject of safety is this idea that you can reuse single-use gloves. I thought we'd stamp that one out a long time ago. If it says single-use gloves on them, they're single-use gloves. It's, it's, it's just... What happens is the minute you start, the minute you use them, the nitrile, which is probably the right sort to use with um, resin, but it, it starts to degrade. That's why you don't reuse them. You can't see it, but they are starting to degrade the minute they come into contact. There we go, that one there. With the chemicals. So, uh, though they might look fine, you might think they're fine, you might blow air into them if you risk putting them to your face and having used them to see if they're still okay. You, you might do all of that. They won't be. There's a good reason. It says single use on them. Now, if you've got some that say they are for chemical use and can be used and reused, great. That's good. Otherwise, I'm afraid we just have to be wasteful and our nitrile single use gloves, which are ideal, we can only use once. Now that is not just my opinion, that is actually what it says on the packet and it's also what my chemical compliance expert friend confirms big time. So there you go. The thicker ones are good of course because they don't tear when you're using them which is always a real bonus because I've had I've had the thin ones tear but yeah, they're still good. Right we're going to just leave these. It's warm in here. They should all cure up pretty quickly um, and then we'll move on to have a look at, at Kermit here because as I said I do need to make some moulds from him. So as soon as these are movable we'll move on to doing Kermit. Okay while well, this lot are setting because it's, yeah, it's only been an hour but I'm getting impatient. I want to get on with this. Um, let's, let's sort out Air Frog. Now this, let me swing you across. This it has to be Excuse all the mess, I've got a million things going on down here, but we're going to be working here. This has to be the easiest way I've found to make a mould. Now I've got a little bit of the silicon that I used before, so I'm going to use that to stick the frog down with. But these are, I think they're little, are they cups for little cakes or something? Party cup? I get them from a party supplier's place anyway. And the reason I'm using that is look how neat the Kermit fits in there. Isn't that perfect? Whereas the paper cups I use for my resin, he's too, he's too close to the edges. I find these just right for a Kermit. Now, what I'm going to do to stick him down to the bottom is I'm actually just going to put a bit of silicon on because you can peel that off afterwards. So there is a little bit that's got really thick and gloopy in the bottom of my cup from when I did the others an hour ago. So I'm just going to put that on there. Now, of course, you could use a glue gun. But I find this is a good way of getting him really close and neat to the bottom without any too much in the way of messy edges and things. Um, as in, you know, like a gap, like a bit that sticks up or, oh, I don't know what I mean. I get a nice, neat bottom. It does need trimming usually, but it's all nice and flush with the surface of the resin. So this is what I tend to do. Right, like that. Now, of course, once we've got our Kermit mould made, then we are going to have to make a shiny version, which is going to involve an awful lot of varnish, <laughs> spray varnish. Right, there he is. He's stuck down there, hopefully. I'm going to give it an hour to let that firm up because that will hold him down because he will float. He's hollow and I haven't yet managed to fill him up with anything. So we'll be doing that. Right, the next thing I want to do, by the way, and this will be another video, so watch this space. I've got a load of little crystal froggy brooches here. Aren't they lovely? They're cheapy ones from AliExpress um, and I want to make moulds off those as well. Now of course there's a clasp on the back which we could trim off but I don't think I want to because I, I'd, I'd like to retain them. I really would. Aren't they adorable? 
and the bottoms aren't terribly flat either. Now I might have a solution to this. My bottom isn't flat either if anybody wants to know. So watch this space. I will show you how I do these and as I said that will be another video. See you later. Okay focus is back on Kermit and let's get some uh, silicon in here. So he's pretty, he's pretty well stuck down. I put a little bit around the sides as well but he's pretty well stuck. He's going nowhere. So let's just stir this up and we're going to tip it in. So here we go and let's hope he doesn't float. Hope I've got this Left it long enough, I'm being impatient, so maybe not. We'll soon see, won't we? Is that enough silicon? What amazes me how much silicon this mould uses to make. Really, I should put a void in it somewhere, shouldn't I? Yeah, I'm going to need a little bit more. Just a bit more then, and don't you dare float. Got me, boy. Right. Now, this is a mould from... This is that because we've got Halloween coming up, haven't we? So this is that mould. That's what it makes. And it is from Finnebear. Right, Claire's Crafty Corn has been doing some inlays using these Finnebear moulds. And I saw this one and thought, okay, so that's one we can we can take silicon inlays from, is it? Excellent. Thanks, Claire. Um, that's really good to know because whilst I will, of course, as long as I don't wreck it doing this, which you're being good shouldn't do. Uh, I will be doing some actual resin casting from these too, but I did want to see um, how we get on with Claire's inlay making method, because that's how you make like, spooky skulls and things inside, inside things rather than solid looking. Or well, one of the ways anyway. So let's get some silicon on the go. So this is the silicon that I usually use and it is from Let's Resin lovely soft one-to-one -one resin it's translucent as well so it's good for using with your um, ultraviolet curing resins if you so wish now i know claire got brave and said that these molds they seem to be a different sort of slightly different sort of rubber in that the silicon doesn't stick to them so much that you can't get it out usually so she got brave and didn't spray with silicon or you know release spray or anything I, um and i i trust her completely i'm absolutely sure that works but i'm just scared <laughs> So I've got some silicon spray. Um, this is just, I mean, I've got some that's badged up as mould release spray and things like that. But to be honest, I think it's all the same stuff. It's just, just basically a silicon spray. So I'm giving it a good coat of that because I am worried. <laughs> Claire, apologies. I do trust you. I just, um, yeah, just freaked out slightly um, as it's a new mould. When I've taken the castings I want off it, I'll, uh, I'll try it with, I'll try it without. Now, as you can see, we've got wings and a skull to go with it down here. There's, in fact, I'll use that little skull. I don't know, because we could use that skull. I'm making a mess here, aren't I? Ended up with silicon where I shouldn't shouldn't have it. don't know how much silicon I've got left here. I'm actually running out. and have to open another bottle soon. Well, me being me, I have filled it with bubbles, but the electrosin silicon does degas itself. Fantastically, so I'm not at all concerned about it. Uh, hmm. this space when Halloween comes up because I shall be doing more <laughs> we're going to have fun with these I think I don't quite know what I'm going to do I've got the, actually, these bone ones and they make a good dragon's nest are they both directions no they're different sizes aren't they hmm. I was just wondering if we could stick two together to make a complete, you know, complete 3D bone maybe not should be able to do a dragon's nest one way or another, shouldn't I, though? Make a nest for one of my big dragons. Don't know if that's very Halloween-y, though, so we'll do we'll do that some other time. But, yeah. Look oh, at this silicon I'm still getting everywhere, despite pouring it supposedly carefully with my stick. So another skull. I'm going to run out in a minute. Okay, people, I'll see you later, uh, and we'll see if we can demould these over. This lot are setting really nicely. These have come out fine, the first pair of footprints. Incidentally, these will be winging their way to my uh, giveaway winner, Catherine. Because these are all going in Catherine's box. So, Catherine, if you're watching, <laughs> these are on their way to you, along with that prototype of that new mould. Crystal mould with the, with the holy centre. Crystal centre. 
Oh, look at him. Look at a bat. Isn't that cute? <laughs> Love those bats. Mm -hmm. There we are. Little hearts tend to be very fine. Um, and they sweet. Be nice come Valentine's Day. So look at this footprint. I haven't done these footprint ones before actually, but look at that, isn't that nice? <laughs> I like that. Don't know why I haven't done them before. I've had those for absolutely ages. Let's put Kermit out of the way. Yeah, I've had those ones for ages, so I don't know why I haven't. Flamingo, what I find with a flamingo is I do have to be careful with his, his legs and his neck, which is what you would expect. There he is. And they're nice. <laughs> Pumpkins. I mean, these are nice and sturdy because they're so chunky. Look at that. I mean, you can only use them with fairly deep moulds, really, because they're so chunky, especially the big one. I mean, look at this. Look at this bruiser. <laughs> they're proper fat. See what I mean about the spillage? It just comes off. Or well, you can run around it with some scissors. I might do a little bit of trimming with my scissors later on that. But that's how deep they are, look. So you really can only use them with quite quite a decent depth mould. Little ducks. I've got some of the big ducks still, so I just did the little ducks. <laughs> Cuteness overload. Right. And I did spill some, look. I, tipped, I knocked one over. Really should have put them in a tub of sand or something. Really should have. But anyway, I didn't. Love these owls. Now, I don't you remember my autumn makes last year oh, i've got a little bit of a there's something on him yeah well in fact it's performance anyway but yeah i used some of these in that beautiful autumn tray i did last year the little owlies small footprints here we go yes yeah, so these are these are all fine i didn't need to worry about leaving them till morning but are oh, little footprints these all came from that footprints in the sand make that i did oh when was that? Must have been over a year ago now. You know, sometimes I forget my channel's only been going for, it's not even two years yet. I think the first videos I posted might have been, but that was just a couple of videos I'd made to show somebody something. I wasn't actually intending to build a YouTube channel. That's nice, isn't it? Little footprints. Paw prints, rather. Baby owl. Here we go. <laughs> Cutie. I'll, I'll lay these all out so you can see them properly in a bit. More big footprints. These footprints are really, really popular. So I tend to make a lot of the footprint ones. Oops. Big bat. Here we go. Big bat. <laughs> the cheeky expressions. Can you see? They're nice. I'll clean these all up properly later. Now these are the bigger hearts. Oh, little puffy, chunky hearts, those are. Very sweet. Oops, a bit of overspill on that one. Nice. They always come out well, to be honest. Because the silicon falls away, if I, if I overspill it, it's the one's got uh, like a centre in it. But yeah, because the silicon kind of falls away over those edges, you've always got um, a line where it'll tear off or cut off easily too. And last but not least, don't forget you can keep all these bits to infill and save silicon later when you're making other molds so save all your little save your failures too because you can use them to you know top up your <laughs> top up your silicon in your next mold i find that nice so those are demolded quite quickly which is great i don't know if i'm going to try these yet shall i just try one and actually i could get rid of this now couldn't i Shall I just try one and see what happens? Put these to one side. Right, this is a bit nerve wracking. It's coming. It's coming. It's coming. Yep, Claire was not kidding. This works. Look at the detail of that inlay. That is awesome. Well, this is Halloween sorted, isn't it? It's 
This is where I'm quite glad I've got nails because you can get under that edge without having to get a sharp tool in there. Those are fantastic. Bone. Right, I'm going to fast forward this bit for you because you can see what's going on. Um, some of them are going to need a bit of trimming around the edges. Let's zoom in actually. There we go. Um, but basically, yeah, I'm just going to carry on pulling them all out like this. So I'll be back with you shortly. In the meantime, enjoy some music. back in the room now i was reading the packaging for these because i couldn't i was wondering why on earth um the silicon comes out of these when other silicon molds you know you'd just be stuck even probably with a release spray you'd struggle and it's because they're made of pvc something else mix it's, it's not actually silicon it's it's something else and that's why um so yeah mystery solved that looks fantastic to me. Um, these look amazing. I think you'll agree if I zoom you in on these. They're going to be real fun to play with. So watch out for a video on those at some point soon. Like I said, that's probably my Halloween project sorted. My little inlays from my other little fondant cutter thingies are all doing nicely now I'm going to just clear tidy up now because I think what I want to do is just leave these for a while I'll leave them overnight in fact you're meant to leave silicon a couple of days before you actually go using it as a mold just to make sure it's absolutely 100% cured and firmed up as much as it's going to be so and you don't want to damage it I suppose having to go on to all this trouble to make them so I'll be packaging these up uh, as soon as they're all cured and they will be, as I said, there'll be a full set going out to Catherine and I will be putting the rest, just packaging them up to go in my store. Now these I will put away safely, ready for Halloween. So this just leaves, leaves his lordship here to demold, doesn't it? So, oh no, it also leaves. It leaves, it leaves these. Look at these. Shall we do it? I was going to leave them longer, but let's do it. I'm right, just going to get my nails around the edges like this. It's just loosening. And then I should be able to just grab it and pull. Or not. Sometimes this can be very temperamental. So I will get a weeding tool under it which surprisingly doesn't do much harm. You just end up with a tiny puncture hole in the side, which is not going to matter. So this is a recently had a polish this mould has, so I want to see how shiny it is. I'm not happy with that. That is not shiny enough still. It had got scratched, so I did... I did just um, give it a polish. And it needs more. And I have had to polish this one, of course. So let's see. Yes. Now that one is shiny. We'll give that a try in the morning and see if that's good to go. I do tend to test them all before I post them. So when you receive moulds, if you buy them from me, I have used them once to make sure they're okay. But yeah, this one I am clearly going to... I'll keep this mould for myself. It won't go to waste. But I clearly am going to have to give that another, another polish. So there we go, that just leaves this one to do. So this, I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll do a part two video because I want to do a series of moulds off this because obviously I need to show you how to do the shiny one and I need to, uh, also, I've got an idea for a third version. So yeah, I'll tell you what, let's make that a third 
the second part so that'll be part two um and we'll call it a day at that with all of these inlays so i hope that's okay with you folks i'm just thinking this is going to get to be an immensely long video and it's going to be just too much so that in itself can be a separate topic you've seen how i'm making the mold it's pretty straightforward so i will film the pulling you out of there um, and i will clip some of the bits from making this to put at the start of that second video just so you don't lose the continuity okay folks if you like this video and you found it of any use to you at all then do give me a thumbs up i'd really appreciate that and of course if you want to subscribe that would be a good idea if this is the sort of thing that you like because i do a lot of this and i have at least a couple of videos coming out every week on resin or mold making or it's something associated so if you want more of this sort of thing do, do uh, subscribe which of course is free thanks everyone and i'll see you for the next one